Welcome everybody, thanks for coming. I will talk today about uh, a new approach we want to, to present here to detect uh, changes on data stream mining. So we are looking for uh, an algorithm that is able to analyze the changing on the how if it is stationary, the, if we have a non-stationary data set that is changing all the time and we want to have an algorithm that detects when this change is happening. This work was made together with uh, Su Yang Guan and Xin Yao from Birmingham. Here you have my website if you want to contact me, anything else related with that. Well, uh, right now is uh, you are already uh, you are very well know how much data are around here, around our world. For example, the estimation for this year for 2018 in the in the world, there are millions of emails and videos uh, and search queries made through uh, through the website through the internet every minute. So we have a myriad of that. Of course, I don't need to convince you about that. Uh, it is estimated that during this talk, the, I hope to, tell, to last about 20 minutes, the, the amount of data generated in the world will be 20 petabytes. 20 petabytes is more or less one half of all the uh, works written by the history of mankind in all the languages, in all the history. So it's, uh, it's amazing, the, the number of the size of data. Of course, unfortunately, it's not of the same quality <laughs> comparing this, the, the next 20 minutes, especially with my presentation, <laughs> compared with the, the whole history uh, writing all languages. So the main the task here is to extract relevant information, to detect uh, the, and to, to synthesize uh, what is uh, happening and to, to extract the essence of this data in order to convert the data or knowledge. And this is why we are here. Uh, today I am especially interested in two topics. One of them is when the data growth exceeds current storage capacity. Think, for example, about using an algorithm in a mobile with a limited storage uh, and computing capability. So we are focused on algorithms that don't need to store all the data. And the second topic I want to, to deal with that today is uh, to provide knowledge as soon as possible. I mean, to explain what is happening when it is happening, not a few minutes or a few days later. So we are very interested on, on analyzing what is occurring when it is occurring. And uh, there are many real world incremental problems. Uh, problems where the data are coming continuously. Traffic in networks, social networks, Internet of Things, phone communications, energy consumption, etc. Uh, nature are wiser than us, for sure. So uh, millions of years ago, it was already solved in nature. For example, in Jacare Caiman in Brazil, after the drain, the dry season, when rain st uh, start to fill the river, the Cayman, well, they, they have the very low energy the, after waiting for several months with uh, very low water. So they just open the mouth and wait for the fish getting inside the, the mouth. This is a good strategy. And this is a kind of uh, streaming, isn't it? So they, they are taking profit of the streaming, in this case the river, and waiting for the fish uh, uh, getting inside the mouth. Uh, this is what we try to do with data stream mining, to, uh, to deal with data that are coming continuously with a high arrival rate, so we don't uh, try to store the data, but instead we, what we do is to read data, analyze it, process it, and forget data forever. Uh, we deal with non-stationary distribution problems, as I mentioned that before, and uh, we also uh, have a, one of the main requirements to have an immediate response. Here we have a classical uh, classification problem. For example, we want to classify the, the, if a flight will be delayed or not. So we have 
a lot of data, and we know from the past that this data was uh, delayed or not, and then we want to classify that. In data stream mining, what we have is, is continuously feeding this data flow with continuous data, and then we have the stream, the data stream mining that continuously is generating models. Models like the one you are seeing here, decision tree models in this case, that say if the next flight would be delayed or not. And the point, interesting point is that this model is changing over time. We can use the model every time to ask for a new flight, it will be delayed or not. In this problem, we have, uh, it's very usual to have uh, changes on the dynamics of the problem. Yes, you have a question? <coughs> yes, but so, so um, you predict any future flight or a limited <coughs> set of future flights or one flight? Uh, uh, one flight where we have the what's features, what's the we have the airlines, the day, the, the timing, but, we, but the flight is still not uh, uh, started. So we can check a, f a future flight. So the target is any flight in the future at the day? Yes, any, any flight. The point is that it's predicting based on the current knowledge. Maybe before the flight will finally come, the knowledge will change. So every time you ask, the answer can be different if the data is non-stationary. And when it is not stationary, what we have is a concept drift. I mean, what, something that was true in the past is false now. Something before was class A and now is class B, exactly the same data. So what we try to do is to, to if we receive recent data that conflict with the past, then we should adapt the knowledge to this new data. But the, if, the, all, if the new data are, are clump, uh, they don't have a conflict with the past, we are also we try to preserve the past. Uh, here you have an example of a concept drift. In concept drift, we have several changes. For example, here we have uh, how uh, time by time the, the labeling of the class can change. Sometimes it's a gradual concept drift. Other times we have an abrupt concept drift. At the end, we have this kind of changes, sudden, incremental, gradual, recurring. Also, we can have flip and noise, but this kind of uh, non-stationary cases, we are not interested on that, because actually it's something that is not. We, we are not interested in generating a knowledge to explain noise. And here you have an example of uh, the performance of different classification algorithms for data stream mining. So here we have three concepts drift, uh, as you can see, and different algorithms uh, as they are receiving more and more data, they can improve the performance of the algorithm. And once they have a concept rate, for example, here in 12,500, then the error rise in, are increasing. And then if the algorithm has a good adaptability, it start to decrease again the error until the next concept drift. There are many ways to deal with that. Uh, some algorithms have this kind of adaptability. Another approach is to detect the concept drift. And once you have detected the concept drift, you can use, for example, to resetting, for resetting the, the learner algorithms to adapt to this new data. And this is the goal today, to have propose a concept drift uh, detector that is able to recognize these changes. If you're interested in that topic, you can check uh, this uh, web, this uh, paper, this survey is, has a good, very good survey on concept drift adaptation. The point here is that the conventional approach are analyze the decrease in the predictive performance as a sign of change in data. This is the conventional approach. Again, in nature, we can have some inspiration about this approach. For example, when a cheetah is, uh, want to, is hunting uh, uh, a new, in this case, uh, the cheetah animal can detect the weakness in the manatee. Here is detecting that a junk, uh, junk uh, new is easier to be catched. So at the end, concept drift detector is perceived this weakness in the classifier. And when the classifier error is started to increase, then they 
catch it. They, they recognize the concept drift. Here we have an, uh, a real world, uh, sorry, a very well known algorithm, which is named drift detection method. In this case, uh, as I say, it analyzes the performance of the algorithms uh, in an incremental way, is uh, gathering the average and the standard deviation of the performance, and once detect that is started to be increased, Firstly, it uh, triggers a warning level, and then it starts to store examples. And um, if the performance is still increasing, then they, uh, they consider there is a drift level. And then you can, uh, as I said, in this case, uh, you already recognize the concept drift, and then you can do whatever you want with the algorithm. This kind of algorithms can be very inefficient because of the use of this uh, uh, analyzing the performance of the algorithms. Another, a second one, uh, very well known algorithms to detect concept drift is Adwin. In this case, what we have is uh, we have a window of the data we are receiving, and then the algorithm is time receive a new data, analyze all the subset, possible subset, uh, dividing the window in two windows, two joint windows. So analyze the difference distribution of these two, two windows. And when the algorithm see that they are different enough, for example, like here, uh, we can say that there is a change is detected. And then the algorithm remove the oldest uh, data from the window. These approaches, all the approaches that we can find in literature, more of them uh, are based, as I say, are based on the performance of the learner. And this has some kind of drawbacks. For example, it can occur the paradoxical situation that the learner, if the learner, the classifier, is very good adapted to the to non-stationary data, the performance will not be uh, worsened so much when we are receiving the concept drift. So maybe you are not detecting the concept drift. Even when you are interested in knowing that the concept drift was happening, to improve even better, even more the algorithm, or just to understand the nature of the knowledge, the, sorry, the, the problem you are solving. Another drawback is that they are very, uh, they have a poor efficiency because of the use of uh, analyzing the performance of the learner. So let's forget about that and let's try to propose uh, a new approach. Uh, the algorithm that I want to, to, tell, to propose today is called HSP. Histogram, uh, histogram straightforward prediction. And what it do is to analyze the data, raw data, not the performance of the learning. It has some uh, advantages, as we can see here. For example, it is extremely efficient. The efficiency is only n by m, where n is the number of features and m the number of classes. Uh, the implement is, very, is uh, simple. Is, uh, you, you need a few lines of code, so the implementation integration is very agile, and also it's easy to understand and to debug the process. Um, as we will see in the experiments, it can very, is very, uh, can very accurately uh, recognize this. Uh, uh, concept drift, and moreover, it is also interesting that it's compatible with traditional drift detectors, as the two algorithms we mentioned it before. So we can use both approaches because of uh, uh, they are quite different. So can detect uh, in different way the concept drift. Again, we have also some inspiration in the nature, which is the inspiration in this case. Well, in our case, what we are looking for is movement on the data. So we don't care if the classifier is working good or not. We just want to see changing on that. Here, for, hand, for example, we have the snake that uh, the vision is very poor. So the snake cannot detect the, the iguana. This is a hackling iguana. Has only a few hours of uh, the, since, since it born. And it already know from the beginning that if it doesn't move, the snakes will don't detect that. But once it starts to move, all the snakes can detect it. And sometimes they can catch it, as we can see here. But to be for you, I think the good news for you is that this iguana will escape, as we are going to see now. 
Yeah, you do it. <laughs> so sometimes they, they win, they win. And it's a good, uh, t it's a good training, isn't it? Uh, after a few hours in the world, you are already learning how to escape from, from snakes. And finally, the final gap, ooh, I'm still uh, <laughs> escaping, and now it's already safe. So what I want to show here is how to detect the concept drift based on movement, changing on the classifier, not the performance of the classifier. And this is our algorithm. So what we use is uh, histograms to, to analyze the data distribution. It's important to remark here that we have uh, two, two parameters, delta and alpha. The alpha can be defined by, by delta, and with delta, we are analyzing, uh, we are setting the, the memory of the histograms. So we have a forgetting factor. So data uh, farther from the present will have a, 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 a lower influence on the histogram. So it's a kind of weight based on time. And then what we do is to fill, to obtain this kind of histograms for each class. Based on these histograms, we do this predictor, this prediction. The prediction is very straightforward because we are not proposing a good predictor. We don't, we don't care about the quality of the predictor, I mean the classification. We just want to see changes on the prediction. And that's the point. This is why we can use a straightforward predictor. So what we do is, if the data is lying in this area, the area where both classes are overlapping, we cannot use this variable to predict which class will belong to the data we are receiving. But on the contrary, if we, the data lies, for example, in the red area, we can say with, a, with certain probability that the, the data is coming belong to class red. So using this very straightforward prediction, we can analyze the boundary decision and then to monitor changing on the boundary decision. That's the, the objective of this, the algorithm. So for example, here uh, in, in the, uh, the bottom right part, we have uh, the performance based on Yimin. Is a measure that can uh, can work for unbalanced data set, and then in an incremental way also, of course, with Jimin we can uh, we can analyze the performance of this prediction. For example, this predictor, very straightforward predictor, is doesn't doesn't work if the boundary are orthogonal to the axis because the histograms will be completely overlapped in that case. But again, I want to remind you that we are not interested on a good performance predictor. We just want to analyze changing on the uh, boundary decision. That's the point. So here we have the algorithm that we propose to do. What we do is to, in an incremental way, we analyze this G-mean performance. And to do that, we use uh, incremental computation, an original way of computing the incremental computation where we are including a weight to a uh, factor to to make uh, more important to be, to do that the recent data are more important than past data with this algorithm we can uh, uh, detect concept drift to do that we have tcd that is the time stamp of the last time we detected a concept drift so when we have gathered enough data based on the delta parameter I mentioned before, because it's a kind of the memory of the histogram, when we have enough data, we start to, go to, to, to store this uh, increment, incrementally, this Jimmy. And then so when we have uh, uh, enough data, as I said, also we start to, to, to store the minimum and maximum uh, performance of time by this uh, predictor. So analyzing increasing and decreasing of these uh, parameters, we can see where the concept drift is happening. Here, 
we are interested on, on detecting valleys and peaks. So decreasing and after in, increasing or increasing and after decreasing. Except uh, we have an exception in our algorithm because sometimes we, we connect to decreasing uh, phase, the stage, because of just the, the rotation of the data allow the, the predictor to be even better. So in this case, we also detect concept drift. And the complexity, as I say, is very, very efficient. It's only the pen of line 4 and 32, as we see here, and it's only the number of features by the number of classes. Here we have the result with eight data set, where we have different concept drift, strong and weak drift, and sudden and gradual change. So the, this combination of four of eight uh, data set. And we can see how the result. We are comparing our algorithm with the other two, the DDM and Adwin that I explained before, and other three al al algorithms well known in the literature. Uh, we have several parameters. For example, we analyze the time from the concept drift till it is detected, and also the false alarm. So with these all columns, uh, these different metrics, we can have an idea about the performance of the algorithms. For example, here we have the histograms of the timestamp where the concept drift were detected with the different algorithms. The top one is, the, is the, our proposal. And as we can see, uh, in blue is the, the through detection, through, uh, uh, it's actually happened, the, the concept drift, and green is a false alarm. And as we can see, our algorithm detect very, in a very compact way the concept drift and better in general than other algorithms. Here you, we have some summary, aggregation of the measure we say, we see before, and uh, so to analyzing the reactivity, robustness, effectiveness, reliability, and uh, overall performance. And again, as we see, our proposal, HSP, is doing very well. We also were curious to see how the algorithm is working when the data are orthogonal to the axis. As I remember, as you remember before, I mentioned it, that the, in this case, the histogram are not able to distinguish the which class is it. For example, if we have this kind of data, it's a very simple data, but the, our, our straightforward predictor will receive uh, the histograms completely overlapped, so don't allow to predict that. But the point is that, as I say, what we are interested in analyzing is changing on the boundary decision. And as we see here in this data set, we have concentrate one, two, three, four, rotating this data the checkboard uh, uh, data, we can see again how algorithm is the best one to detect concept drift, better than the state-of-the-art and well-known approaches that uh, you are seeing here. And finally, the efficiency. Our algorithm is very efficient compared with other approaches. One of the quicker one of the, all the ones that we were analyzing was DDM, so we compare our algorithm with DDM. As we can see here, our algorithm is, uh, depending on the data set, can be up to 1,800 times quicker in a real world problems as airline. The problems I mentioned it as an example before, we, we have more than, uh, in these experiments, more than half million of data. And uh, our algorithm is able to process around uh, 40,000 samples per second. So to conclude, uh, we have proposed an approach, an, a new approach to detect concept drift that doesn't track the performance of the learner, compared, uh, contrary to the conventional approach. We measure ch changes on the decision boundaries, and then we see that uh, it can obtain a good uh, performance, and also with an extraordinary efficiency. As further work, we want to analyze the impact of this concept drift in learner performance, and we would also like to analyze the, the behavior in class and balance uh, data. So thank you uh, very much. Um, well, maybe now in the question or having a coffee later, I will be happy to share with you any ideas.
Thank you very much.